It's grassroots recreational four-wheel driving. This is definitely our backyard. With product reviews, tech talk and driver training. Jump in your seat, let's go. How-to segments. That's it. Rig reviews and loads more. Going four-wheel driving. See you out there on the tracks. Sundays at 7.30. and welcome to Going Four Wheel Drive. This show is all about you and your trips, four wheel drive clubs and our backyard, the bush. Now as this is a new show, we will be also having later in the series, how to's, tech talk, your rigs, interviews and perhaps even a competition or two. So stick around for that, that, that should be really good. Now also today, as it's a new show, we thought we'd kick it off with some beginners. Now one of these beginners sent me an email not so long ago asking if she could come out with us. She hasn't got any experience whatsoever, so we said, yeah, we'll take her out. So today, we're going to follow her and one of her friends. They've both got Pajeros, and we'll see how they go. They might be really good vehicles, and also newbies, they're quite often full of confidence. So we'll see how they go. If they get into a spot of bother, we'll pull them out and uh, help them out. So jump in your cars, jump in your seats, let's go. Well, this is Dave and his beloved blue Pajero. Now he's done a little bit of four wheel driving. Hello, he's got a little bit of problem. Uh, I bet you any money he's in first low instead of second low. Not enough momentum and his tyres gumming up with a bit of mud. Oh, wheels off the ground, grouse. Oh, I see Dave's problem. He's in first low for sure and probably hasn't got enough air out of his tyres either. But he seems to be going all right though, yeah, he's still plodding along. Now, this is Keith, Steph's other half, better or worse, I'm not sure, and very debatable too. He just puts his foot down with the auto and just gets enough momentum up and keeps on going. On the rock section, Dave's truck seems to be going quite okay. He's still in first low and seems to be going up over the rocks without much trouble at all. He's got a lot of momentum there and he's doing quite well. Oh, Keith. Yeah, Keith hasn't done any four-wheel driving before whatsoever. And there was a little rock ledge there. I told him just to put his foot down a little bit harder. So he goes and puts his foot down a lot harder, as you can see. Rock and roll, baby. Now, for any beginner coming up against some ruts, whether they're deep ruts or even shallow ruts like this, they've got to learn how to pick their lines. And it's always a great idea if you can have someone else in front of the vehicle a little bit further down the track spotting you with a handheld radio or even hand signals. Oh, that's a nice sound, that is. Metal on rock. When you have a track that has a slight embankment on it, you never want to try and drive into it. You'll go up and you'll start lifting wheels off the ground almost straight away. But this is exactly what Steph was doing, but she couldn't hear because of all the noise inside the car from the kids. So it's very important to have all the children quiet so you can hear what instructions are being given over the radio. Now, if Steph's hubby had have done this, she would have been absolutely livid. She would have been spitting the dummy plus. Yeah, I think Steph is just trying to outdo Dave with lifting wheels off the ground. Gentle Annie is our third track for the day. And we came across this disco that got himself, well, slid himself across the track 
and got himself well and truly bogged. He's got fantastic tyres on this vehicle, but still got himself stuck so hard that when another group of people came from the opposite direction, they ended up having to winch him out. And it took him many, many goes to get up over the whoop de doo and finally get to the top of Gentle Annie Track. OK, you've got yourself your four-wheel drive, but there are a few basic items you really need to get and keep in your vehicle. One is the map. Get the map of the areas you're going into and use that so you don't get lost. Another item to get is your tyre gauge. You can let your tyres down with this, this is a dial gauge, and you can also check your pressures of course when you're pumping back up. Another item is a radio. Now, you can get an in-car fitted radio or you can get one of these handhelds. They're quite cheap to buy and you can need those for convoys. Another item, you may never use it, but it's always there in case you do. That's a first aid kit. Get one of these, you can buy them anywhere, or you can make up your own. Now, another item to get is your shackles. There's two versions of the shackles. They come in 3.72 tonne and 4.75 tonne. And they've got the rating stamped up here on the, uh, on the bow. Now, if you don't use these, you can end up in trouble with the cheaper versions. These, with the ratings, you know they're going to handle a job well. And also your snatch strap. Get one of these snatch straps and you won't be using other people's and getting into trouble using them at all. They are fantastic. This is an 8,000 kilo one and it'll last you really, really well. Now, these items, there are right ways and wrong ways of using them. We will show you in the how-tos in the series the right way and the wrong way to use these items. So get in your cars, go bush and have a great trip. With the track now clear from the disco, it's now time for our convoy to start heading up the track and keeping to the right as much as possible but straddling the ruts as well. It's awfully slippy up here, it hasn't rained for a couple of days but this side of the hill does not get any sun at all so it stays really wet and sticky and it's an orangey clay stuff so it really sticks hard. Dave's at the spot where the disco got stuck and he's having a bit of problem himself. The tyres have clagged up with mud and not cleaning themselves and he's also in first low. But uh, he's still having a good crack at it and perhaps if he let down his tyres a bit more and tried in second low, he might have a bit more success. Now when you're buying a, a used Forby, one of the parts that's never mentioned are the CV joints. Now coming up after the break, we'll talk to Dallas Crane from the CV Centre in Dandong about the popular vehicles that use CV joints. So stay tuned. Best off-road storage systems are strong and very affordable. Ready to bolt into your four-wheel drive. Double stackers or standard two-drawer units. Best off-road 03 9706 6527 Factory 3 19 to 21 Park Drive South Dandenong. Maxxis Tires. Ultimate Control. Dallas, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ian. My pleasure to be here. Dallas, what is a CV, please? A CV, it's actually a drive shaft which uh, comes out of your diff housing and goes to your front wheels. What it actually does, it allows a rotation of your front wheels, also allows movement in suspension up and down, and also it allows you to turn the car from left to right. That's exactly what a CV does. Right. Well, we've got a couple of CVs over there, the popular ones that you've got ready for us. We'll go over there and have a look at them, and uh, Dallas will explain exactly what they are. Now, there are a number of different types of CVs, as we said. We've got some of the most popular ones just down here. Dallas, 
What is this one here, please, mate? This one here, Ian, is your Navara. As you can t see, you've got three lots of two bolts that hold it onto the diff assembly. Undo them, bang, once you've got the rest of that out, straight out of the car. Simple job. And this one? This, this one here, Ian, as you can see the difference, Pajero. It's got a snap ring on here. Once you've un undone everything out of the car, that, grab that, bang, straight out. Not a problem. Very simple job. Now this one here, I can recognise that. That looks like it's out of a Hilux or Surf. That's exactly what it's out of. As you can tell by, it's got the six evenly spaced bolt holes. Same, same idea, undo them bolt holes. Under them bolts, bang, out it comes, sorry. And this one here? That's your 100 series Land Cruiser uh, live axle. Normally it's got an axle sticking out of there. Same principle, out of the car, bang, that'll come straight off your axle. Now we've got a couple of little ones here, or this little one here, that looks like a Rodeo Jackaroo one. That's exactly what that is, Ian. Uh, that there, the Jackaroos and uh, Rodeos would be the hardest... Uh, CV joints to, to take out of a car. With your uh, your normal ones over here, a normal mechanic could do these, take him maybe an hour maximum. With these, professional job, anything up to four hours to get them out of the car. Uh, why is that? It's just uh, the way they're designed. If you pass me that one Ian, I'll just show you. I don't know if the people can see that. There's a circlip on there. Well that's actually inside the diff housing. You need to dismantle half the diff housing to get that circlip off to slide that off the end of the shaft to pull the shaft out. That's why I'm saying about four hours to take them out of the car and that's why you need to bring it to a specialist to do that for you. Now I've got a split boot on my drive shaft. I've taken it out of the vehicle and I've brought it in here to Dallas. He's going to show me how to replace the boot if I need to when I'm in the bush. Right over Ian, what we've got here? We've got a Nissan 720 shaft. Just your basic broken boot basic shaft. What you need, a pair of side cutters. That's the band on it. Band. That's the band broken, taken off straight away. Then all you need to do is just cut your boot like so. Get that out the road to there. And what I've got, I use a big copper hammer to get these off. Usually won't have it, just a normal hammer will do. Only hit the, the top edge of the joint, don't hit where the cage is. And it's mainly a basic that that's it. Simple as that, off it comes. Not a problem with that one. Then what we do here, take that out of there. You won't have a vice, of course, out in the bush, but you should be able to get that off like so. Uh, You've got to remember, you've probably got a, a bit of dirt and grease in it, so give it a good wipe up. If, uh, if it was brought in to me, I'd strip all that down, clean that right out and uh, put some fresh grease in. But here's your grease, your molly lithium grease that we use, just to make basic of squeezing that into there like so. That's that part done. You grab your shaft. Give it a basic clean up. And I use these stainless steel bands, one on there, one on there. Grab your new boot. Over there like so. Remember you've got a circ clip on here, so you've got to get that in there. So it's just a matter of lining that up. Pushing in on the circlip and bang, that's in. Nice and tight. In there, nice and tight. Put your boot over like so. And with these bands, the large band, just open that up there. Onto there. Now, I've got this special banding tool. Here somewhere if I can hang onto it. Just your basic tool, there's nothing. That onto there. Onto there. Yeah, if you haven't got right. a, yes. if, if you don't have a tool with you, what can you use to? Oh, you wipe? look. You could probably use a pair of pliers and a bit of rag. Hang on to that. Pull that as tight as you possibly can. Bend it over like I just done then. Tap it into place. Like so. And if they're the real good bands that I use, you should be able to just basically turn that like that. 
smooth fit, job's done. Then you put your little band on the top, exactly the same as what I've done there. Very simple thing. This, this little band and tool though, like something like that, I think we sell for about 16 bucks, you know. It's something you probably could carry. A boot kit for one of these, look, you're looking around 22 bucks, you know, so it's a basic thing you should carry with it, yeah, with it anyway, so it's not a great expense. Yep, job's done, simple as that. Well, it doesn't look so hard now, changing a CV boot in the bush. Admittedly, no vice, but still be able to do it quite easily. Dallas, thanks very much for being on the show today, and thank you for showing us how to change a boot, and also showing us the different popular assemblies. Thank you, and thanks for having me on your show. Um, I just hope I've given a few little small tips to your viewers out there that they'll be able to change it, the, the boot themselves one day. I'm sure they will be able to. OK, that's all we have in this Tech Talk. Uh, stick by, because we're going to an ad, and then after the break, we're coming back to the newbies and see what they're up to on the tracks again. Maxxis Tires. Ultimate Control. GNC Communications are specialists in two-way radios, GPS navigation, marine electronics and car audio, with products like GME, Uniden, Icom, Vertex and Garmin. Call GNC Communications for the right advice and mention going four-wheel drive for a great deal. Meanwhile, further up the track, Steffi's coming up through the mud and slush without much trouble at all, while Dave's still down below trying to get through the first whoop de doo where the cruiser was. But it's not long before Steffi's up to the top of Gentilani, they're starting to negotiate the rocks. Again, it's always a good idea to have someone out the front of the vehicle guiding you and helping you pick the right line through obstacles such as ruts or even, as, as in this case, the rocks. And Steffi's picking the line really, really well and going extremely slowly so as not to cause any damage to the vehicle. Dave and Axel have given up trying to get over Gentle Annie. Stiffy, on the other hand, has conquered her. So we're coming down Western's track to meet up with these two, and then we'll come back along here and head for another track. I'm stuck on um, the right. Yeah, we're going to the right. Dave wanted to have a go at this little bit of track here. I told him he wouldn't be able to get up, but yet he still wanted to have a good go. <laughs> Steffi wasn't interested in trying to have a go at getting up. She knew she couldn't get up there. So she went around the other way and Dave followed her and they came down this little part of the track here. It was quite an interesting watch, a little bit of wheel off the ground on both vehicles, and they had fun.
back out and go fully to the line. Reverse out and go, go to the line of it. Hey, this is just as bad as you. My track, you ain't gonna make it. This is the last track of the day. This particular section runs for a few k's on the ridge of the hill and it is fantastic. It's got uh, so many little boggy spots, yet they're firm. And these guys are having an absolute ball on this track. Okay, it's really starting to let his hair down and put his foot down as well. Steffi really enjoys this part of the track. She, all she was saying was bouncy, 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 bounce. Absolutely loves it. this downhill section Dave's got to take a little bit slower than what he was before otherwise he could end up finding himself taking the scenic route out of here Well, the newbies have had a really good day today. They've had a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. And even though Dave had a, a few problems right at the very first track, he was in first low instead of second low. But then later on, on another track, he was again in first low instead of second low. And he struggled to try and get over a, a whoop de doo in the mud. But nevertheless, though, he had a lot of fun. And Steph did really, really well coming over the rocks on top of the hill there. And she had no problems at all coming down. She was great. Uh, she was driving the auto, and yeah, against the manual, she didn't do too badly at all. She did really well. But they both had a good day, they both enjoyed themselves, and they can't wait to get out again. But that's all we have time for this week. But before I go, just uh, any information you want, if you want to send in any video clips or anything like that, go to the website, it's www.goingforwalldrive.com, and you can get all the details of the trips that you see on here, and also... If you want to send in your video footage, you get all the details there. So thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again, and happy trails.